Yo, what's going on everyone? Hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to be covering these three energy effects in just a few minutes, so let's not lose any time. And before we hop in, remember to drop a like right now and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Also, if you guys want to save time making these energy effects, I have two different energy presets on my website and a bundle deal for both of them, so y'all can save time and improve your workflow. So anyways, enough yapping, let's hop right into the tutorial. So for this first effect, I'm going to show you guys how to make this rotation shake effect. Uh, sorry for the laggy playback. I don't know why my computer's glitching, but basically this is what it looks like. And I'm going to show you guys how to make that. So I'm just going to go into my timeline right here. I have a fresh timeline. And the first thing that we're going to do is come right here to the project panel and we're going to add an adjustment layer. So if you guys don't know how to do that, basically come right here. You right click, you click new item and select the adjustment layer and just click OK. And then we're just going to drag this in over our footage and we're going to make it six frames long. So we're going to come right here and just go six frames ahead and just cut that. And we're going to place that right in between our clip. So let's just zoom in. And as you guys can see, it's right in the middle. And the first thing we're going to do is add a transform effect. So once you have transform on your clip, the first thing we're going to do is come here and uncheck the use composition shutter angle. And we're going to make the shutter angle something like 180. And now we're going to come to the beginning of our clip right here. And we're going to mess with the rotation first. We're going to play with the scale afterwards. We're just going to keyframe the rotation as zero on the first frame. We're going to go one frame ahead and we're going to bump it up to, let's say, like 23. And then the next one, we're going to make that uh, negative uh, 13. The next one, we're going to make that, let's say, 9. The next one, we're going to make that negative 17 or 18. And then we're going to go two frames ahead and just reset so we have kind of like a smooth animation out. So it's going to start looking like this, as you guys can see. It's looking pretty smooth already, but we have these black edges and that is absolutely not what we're going for. That just makes it look super cheap and trash. So to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to play with the transform. So right here at the beginning on the first frame, we still have these black borders. So what we're going to do is risk, we're going to increase the scale a tiny bit. Five, let's try 125. Yeah, we're getting no borders, so that's good. We're going to click the stopwatch. We're going to go one frame ahead and we're going to bring that up to like 130. We're going to go another frame ahead. That looks good. So we're going to keyframe that at 130 as well. This is good as well. And right here, on this frame, we're getting a uh, black edges right here. So we're just going to bump the scale up to, let's say, 134 to get rid of that. Or actually, we might need a bit more. Let's try 140. All right, 140 is good. And as you guys can see, the black borders have disappeared. And right here at the end, what we're going to do is just we're going to go to the end right here and just reset the scale. So it does this. And this is pretty much the first step. It looks super smooth. And we're just going to add uh, one more effect to tie this all together. We're going to add the directional blur to this. So we're going to come back to the effects right here. And we're going to search for directional blur. And we're just going to drag that onto our clip. There it is right there. <laughs> Couldn't find it for a second. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to come right here to the beginning of the adjustment layer. We're going to keyframe the direction. Let's say we're going to make the direction 90. I think 90 is going to be all right. Keyframe that and the blur length at zero as well. We're going to go one frame ahead and we're just going to play with the blur length. Say let's make that like 30. Sorry, my, my computer is so laggy. I don't know what's going on. But we're going to make that 25. We're going to go a couple frames ahead if my computer would like to. And we're just going to randomize these numbers. Let's make this like 12. We're going to go one frame ahead and we're going to make that uh, 40 or 50. And then we're just going to reset everything right here at the end. So now we're going to be getting this kind of look. I'm super sorry for the laggy playback, guys. My computer is having such a hard time today. I don't know what it is. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the first effect. And we're going to hop into the second one, which is going to be a flicker type of effect. So let's jump right in. So we're just going to drag another adjustment layer onto this and we're going to make it six frames as well. So I'm just going to come here, go one, two, three, four, five, six, cut that. And I'm going to place this in the middle of the transition right here. And now I'm going to go back to the effects. And since I already have directional blur pulled up, I'm just going to throw that on. But we're going to be using that later. So the actual first effect that we're going to throw onto this is going to be brightness and contrast. We're going to be using the directional blur later. I cannot type today either. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm laggy. The computer laggy. Everything is laggy. Anyways, once you have uh, brightness and contrast onto the clip, you're just going to come to the uh, first frame and you're going to keyframe the brightness at, let's say, like 45 right here. We're going to keyframe that and we're going to make the contrast like 27 and keyframe that as well. And also just a quick note, the higher you guys make the brightness and contrast, the more uh, visible the effect is going to be. But for me, I think I'm just going to keep it like this. Anyways, you're going to go one frame ahead, reset, and then you're going to grab these two keyframes, the beginning ones right here with the brightness and contrast um, keyframe. And you're just going to paste that one frame ahead or accidentally went two there. And you go one frame ahead, paste that, and you go reset, paste, and then reset right here two frames before the ending. So we have this smooth ending right there. And as you guys can see, we have the whole flicker effect going on. And now we're going to add the directional blur. So on every single flashing moment, the directional blur is going to be present. So how that works is basically we're just going to bring the direction to let's try like something like 80. We want it to be like a kind of turn. So let's just play with the blur length and see how that looks. OK, so, yeah, this is the kind of uh, blur we want. We can even make this like 75. 
or even let's try to 65. Yeah, 65 is cool. So we're going to keyframe it at 65 MD blur length at 90. Let's bring that down a bit, maybe. Let's bring that down to 60, 68. So we're going to keyframe both of those values right here. And then we're going to go one frame ahead, reset. And then we're just going to grab these keyframes, just like the um, brightness and contrast effect. And we're just going to paste this every single frame. So we're going to come here, reset, paste. And then the last ones, we're going to reset them. So it looks super clean. We have this like flashing blur effect going on. Super simple to throw into your music videos. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the second effect. And now we're going to hop into the last and final effect for today. All right, and for this third effect, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this crazy wipe up transition in just a few steps. And before we get into it, I'm just going to throw an adjustment layer and add a crash zoom between these two clips. And I'm going to be using a crash zoom from my Energy V2 pack. So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. I'm going to make this adjustment layer six frames long. I'm going to come over here and search for crash de-zoom. And I'm going to be using the left one right here. So it de-zooms from the left, just like that. As you guys can see, we got a super clean crash zoom right here. And I'm just going to drag this out for the remainder of the clip. And now we're going to get into the whole crazy wipe up transition. So the first thing we're going to do is add an offset to it. So basically now what we're going to do with offset is just keyframe the shift center two right here at the beginning. And we're going to go right before the last frame of our adjustment layer. And we're going to crank this up to like a crazy number. Like let's say like 20K, just like that. And then we're going to line it back up as good as we possibly can. And yeah, this is perfectly lined up. And as you guys can see, now we're getting this like crazy wipe effect, but it looks it looks like garbage. And we're, we're going to come here and fix that. So now the next effect that we're going to be throwing onto this is going to be directional blur as well. So we're just going to search that up and we're going to throw that into our, where is it? Uh, there it is. So right here, instead of directional blur, what we're going to do first is just leave the direction at zero and keyframe the blur length at zero. And we're going to go one frame ahead and we're just going to bring this up a ton because we don't want to see those separation lines. We want to keep everything like super fluid. So something like 97 is cool. And then we're going to come right here where it ends. So we're going to keyframe that one frame before, and then we're going to go two frames ahead and just reset. So we have kind of like a blur motion right here when everything stops. And it's going to start looking like this, as you guys can see, it looks pretty clean. And now we're going to add two more effects to make everything look a lot cleaner. And if there's like more movement, if that makes sense. So now what I'm going to do is add a transform to it. So now instead of transform, what we're going to do is keyframe the scale at hundred right here on the first frame. And then on the next frame, we're going to bring this up to something crazy like 170. So we have a whole lot of zooming in going on. And then we're going to go right here, right before the last keyframe. And we're going to keyframe the 170. And then right here, we're going to reset. And what we're actually going to do is uh, drag this one out by one frame. So it has kind of like a little transition time to get back to the original scale, as you guys can see right here. And now it's going to start looking like this. It's looking super, super clean. We're getting a really good look, but we're going to add one more effect to just make everything look so much cleaner and it's going to be brightness and contrast. So we're going to come right here. You guys can either make it flicker or just make it do a flash. But my like my opinion personally, I think with these wipes, it looks better just to make a flash. So right here at the beginning of the adjustment layer, you want to keyframe the brightness and the contrast. And you want to go right to where the clip splits right here in the middle. And you're going to make the brightness and the crazy like 60 and the contrast. You're just going to bring that up to 30. And then you're going to go all the way to the end of the adjustment layer and reset everything. And this is the final look that we're getting. This wipe up transition is absolutely crazy. It's so fucking clean. So yeah, this is what the whole clip looks like with the effects now that I've added to it. Playback is super laggy, guys. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I don't know what the computer is having today, but I'm just gonna throw a rendered version on screen for y'all. This is what the three effects look like on our clips right here. It looks super, super clean. And I'm gonna play this through without it. And this is what it looks like without it. As you guys can see, it's a lot more flat, a lot more boring. But with these effects, it just adds a bunch of sauce to the video and just spices it up, gives it a lot more movement. So yeah, that is pretty much it for today's tutorial, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Everything means a lot. You guys, the support is what pushes me to put out more content like this. So if you guys want more videos, more tutorials, more little freebies, preset hacks, assets, and all that, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be making a Discord or a Patreon soon where I'm going to be giving out some free stuff. So stay tuned for that, guys. And yeah, on that note, I will catch you guys on Wednesday. Peace out.